as promised, here's the end of our thing. We're going to talk about centripetal force. Centripetal acceleration doesn't just happen. There needs to be a force pushing or pulling the object towards the center of a circle. It's important to remember that it is a net force. It's not a new force, but it's the sum of all the other forces acting toward the center of a circle. So let's look at what some centri centripetal forces, what forces could be pointing toward the center of a circle. When you're riding on the yo-yo in the, in the state fair. Riding on a yo-yo? The yo-yo, yes. You mean the Ferris wheel? No, the yo-yo, the swing one. No. The, the cables pull the swings off towards the center of out towards the center so they don't go flying off on their own. When you're driving on your in your car on a track, your tires provide the centripetal force that causes you to go in a circle because if you didn't have that, your car would go off in this direction just going off straight. When you're going around a turn in your car, you may have noticed that you slide to one side, but really you're not sliding to one side. This is you. You're the little blue dot. You want to continue going in a straight line. Inertia keeps you going in a straight line. And you're going to go in a straight line unless acted upon by an outside force. That outside force is exerted by the car door. So the car door is what pushes you in toward the center of that circle. Without this friction and without the car door, if somebody had left this car door open, you'd continue along this straight path. Okay, the sun's gravity makes the earth travel in a circular path. Without the earth's gravity, you know, things like to travel in straight lines. That's what inertia is all about. So things like to travel in straight lines. So the earth would just go off 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 in this straight line but the gravity of the sun gravitational attraction between the earth and the sun brings the earth into this circular orbit okay so how about a simple problem this one's pretty straightforward how much friction force do the tires of a car have to have to provide a thousand kilogram car, so that's our mass, through a turn of 30 meters, so that's our radius, 30 meters, at 20 meters per second, so our velocity is 20 meters per second. Okay, so, so we know from before that our centripetal acceleration is our velocity squared over our radius, so our centripetal acceleration is 20 meters per second. We're going to square that and divide by 30. So that's going to equal 400 divided by 30. So our centripetal acceleration is 7.5 meters per second squared. And since our centripetal acceleration is like our net force, the centripetal force is equal to the mass times the centripetal force acceleration. Our centripetal force is going to equal our mass, 1,000, times 7.5, which is 7,500 newtons. So this is the force provided by the tires, the friction force in this case. The friction force is what provides the centripetal force for us to go towards the center of the circle. So this one's very straightforward because we only had one force. Okay, this one's more tricky. It's going to use our idea of net force again. So what normal force? Remember, the normal force is the force of the ground pushing up on the rider. So what normal force will is experienced by a 70 kilogram roller coaster rider at the top of a hill with a radius of 10 meters per second going 5 meters per second. So we have the normal force going up, but we also have his weight going down. Okay, 
And so our, our net force, since these guys are going in opposite directions, is our gravitational force minus our normal force. Now, why isn't it the other way? It's not the other way because he's going to end up going down. Okay. This net force is our centripetal force. So the centripetal force is the gravitational force minus the normal force. So let's see how we would solve that. Okay, so how do we calculate centripetal force? Centripetal force is m v squared over r. The v squared over r is our acceleration. Okay, and then we find our gravitational force, gravity. That's our weight, mass times gravity. And then there's, this is one of those cases where the normal force does not equal your gravitational force. Okay, so the mass of our rider, 70 times his velocity. He was going over the hill at five meters per second. We're gonna square that. And it was a 10 meter hill is going to equal to our mass, 70 times 9.8 g. Okay, remember we're looking for our normal force, so we don't know that. So this side comes out to 175 is equal to 70 times 9.8, which is 686 minus our normal force. So we find that our normal force is 511 newtons. Okay, notice that this is less than his weight. This is our normal force, this is our answer. This is how hard the seat is pushing back up on him. But it's less than his weight. If you remember when you go on a roller coaster and you go over the top of the hill, you feel lighter. And sometimes if you go over them really fast, you pop up off the seat. That's because your normal force is like n zero. So how would this be different if you were upside down on the loop? Now you're upside down, so the normal force is going to be pushing down, and gravity is also pushing down, and your centripetal force goes towards the center of that circle, so your centripetal force is going to equal your normal force plus your weight. So you would set up the equation a little bit differently, but you're still solving for that normal force. So the centripetal force, since our two forces are going in the same direction, remember it's our net force, that's going to equal our normal force going down plus our gravitational force, which is also going down. So we'll still have the same kind of idea as we had before. Our centripetal force was 175 newtons. We don't, want the no don't know what the normal force is minus the force of gravity. So the force of gravity is was 680, hold on, let me check. 686, and so our normal force is actually gonna be a negative number when we solve it. 175 minus 686, Negative 511. Ooh. You know what that means? That means that the seat is actually pushing you up, which it can't do. And so, guess what? That means you've fallen. You don't, you're not going fast enough. Oh no. So, this is what we would look at when we're trying to solve centripetal force problems. Sometimes it's very straightforward and there's only one force, but many times you're going to have to figure out what forces are acting on the, the object.